bonus round. Okay, so today, in the bonus round, uh, I want to talk to you something about something that is, is really near and dear to my heart. And that is the fact that um, it, the, the tendency of Americans to say, this food is bad and this food is good. Is that a thing that we can do? Well, I think to answer that question, we have to talk about what humans are as a species, as, as a the product of millions of years of evolution. You see, for the longest time, uh, humans, just like most animals, ate whatever we could get our hands on. And uh, what that meant is that uh, we learned how to survive on a diet that had a lot of stuff in it. Uh, that's what we call omnivores. Okay, Omnivores is the term that we give to animals or anything that can eat either plants or animals, uh, plants or meat. Now, what that means for us is that not only can we eat those things, but we should. We need nutrients from a huge range of things. And so a lot of diets nowadays uh, tend to say, Carbs are bad, right? Fat is the enemy. Cut out all B12 vitamins, whatever it is. I think this isn't so great. Uh, while, yes, there are a lot of people that could do with less carbs or less fat in their diet, in my opinion, uh, and it's the opinion of a lot of nutritionists, don't think I'm just going out on my own saying this, is that the real key to a healthy diet is eating as much uh, natural food as you can. Now, uh, the general rule of thumb, honestly, for me, when it comes to eating food, is uh, the less processed it is, the less ingredients, the better. Now, I don't mean that in, in like, dinner, you shouldn't put a bunch of stuff, you know, spices and everything, that's great. But if you're at the grocery store and you pick up a cereal and there's a list of 40 ingredients. Here's the problem. The more ingredients, that means the more processed it is. And traditionally, the more processed something is, the simpler the molecules are. And in my opinion, that is the nutrition that we should worry about. And here's why. Remember I talked about our bodies being the products of evolution? Well, it turns out that out in the wild, right, uh, go back to, you know, 60,000 years ago, Central Africa, you're on the plains, you're hunting. Chances are you're not going to be lucky enough to come across a herd of wild Big Macs. The food that you're going to get is going to be very raw, meaning that it's got a lot of very complex molecules. The fatty acids in there are going to be very long. The, the carbohydrate chains are going to be very long and complex and branching. And what that means is that we evolved to digest foods and different molecules at a very specific rate. Now the problem is, the simpler it is, usually the more delicious it is, right? A spoonful of sugar is way better than eating, uh, I don't know, a potato, which is the uh, same basic thing, right? A potato is just a bunch of starch, and as we talked about, starch is just a chain of sugars. But our body is not used to processing just a spoonful of raw sugar, so it processes it very quickly, and that goes for fats, uh, and protein as well. And so the more processed these things are, uh, traditionally the faster we digest them and the less well our body will handle them. They'll run into too many of, of one thing and that's where you get things that aren't good for us. So when you say too many carbs, it's uh, slow down there. Try too many simple carbs. Try for more natural, complex carbs. Same with fats. And the reason I'm talking about that this week is when it comes to butter versus margarine. I prefer butter. And the main reason why is, is not only do I think it's more flavorful, but I think people are terrified of it because it's got this bad rap as like, this is a bad food. No. If you eat in the right proportions, I think it's actually better for you because it is less processed. 
And while that may sound unscientific, the thing we have to remember about food is that natural food has millions of different molecules that even the best scientists couldn't replicate perfectly in a lab. There's just too much there. It's too complex. So I say, leave it to nature. That's how we were created. That's where we came from. Nature probably knows. Evolution's pretty good like that. So, just my two cents. Now, uh, on to your lab for this week. You are going to be making yourself some butter. So, uh, for the lab this week, here's what you need to do. You need to get some cream, uh, and preferably heavy cream. Uh, you don't want to go with the light stuff. Uh, as it says in your textbook, 30 to 40% is definitely the best range uh, of fat content for creams, and that's, that's going to be a heavy cream for sure. Now, essentially, what we want you to do is whip it, and keep whipping it and keep whipping it. Uh, what, as you whip it, uh, we'd like you to stop uh, every now and again and, and maybe every two minutes, every five minute intervals as, as things change, and, and you'll see the changes, and take pictures of them so we can see the changes too. Now you're going to keep going. You're going to get stiff peaks. Those are beautiful if you want a, uh, you know, nice stiff whipped cream, but we want to go further because you see, as we keep doing this, we're going to go from little tiny holes in our fat globules to full on popping them. And that's what we want to get butter. So you're going to keep whipping this and keep whipping this and keep going until your foam breaks. What does it mean for your foam to break? Uh, essentially, you're going to keep going until uh, the, it starts to collapse. It starts to lose that structure. And that's going to be the sign that the fat globules have popped. They're no longer maintaining that shape. And the fat is starting to seep out of there. Okay. Once your foam breaks, uh, what we'd like you to do is take your, uh, your cream and, and leave it in the fridge overnight. Okay. What this is going to do is it's going to allow uh, your fat solids and, and your liquid state to kind of separate, and you should be left with something that resembles butter. Now, it's not going to be perfect. I can't promise it will be incredibly delicious, but we're going to make butter! How cool is that? So, uh, please make sure you're documenting that, make observations, just kind of what do you notice? When does it happen? Uh, and we can't wait to see it. Talk to you next week.